Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. This time we are talking about another method, how to measure flow. This time we are talking about the inductive flow measurement. You will see there are some benefits. Yeah? Let's say we have a uh, we have tube, pipe, and in this pipe there is our streaming gas liquid or whatever. Okay. So in here we have our liquid and fluid, let's call it fluid, yeah? and here we have the velocity V. Right? What we actually do, yeah? what we actually do is that we have here, we apply here. one coil and we apply here below one coil yeah. so this is not only one wire these are windings yeah. so there is a, a whole coil located here also here, whole coil, uh, and that's it. Hmm? This coil, uh, this coil is producing here, between here and here, a magnetic field, B. magnetic field and here we place some electrodes one here and one at the opposite side and it, between here we measure voltage I could say, eh, why I should I measure voltage? Huh? This is just streaming. There is some liquid streaming through a magnetic field. Huh? However, huh, this liquid is not only liquid, or this gas is not only liquid, this fluid is not only fluid, it consists of atoms. Yeah? And most of fluids or liquids do have ions inside. Yeah. So let's write most of the fluids contain some sort of ions. Positive and negative. Usually, because the liquid is usually, or the fluid is usually neutral, uh, positive and negative ions are with the same amount of them, right? In, if it's water, yeah, then usually there's some dissolved salt or something like this, yeah, and then you have some chloride, then you have natrium, yeah, and so you have ions, positive and negative, usually balanced. All right, so... Now we have ions. Ions are charged atoms. Yeah? Charged atoms, they have a charge. Yeah? And there is the, the force, yeah? Lorentz force. On charges, charges. On charges in magnetic field. These charges, if the charges are moving through a magnetic field, there is a force applied, yeah, which is the charge, 
Yeah? In case of an ion, this would be, for instance, one elementary charge, yeah? or two, depending on what grade the ion is. Yeah? And then there is the velocity b. Yeah? Since the velocity is in this direction, and b is in this direction, velocity cross b means the force of, um, on positive charges would go to this direction, right? And if the charge is negative, yeah, so in this direction, towards this, this uh, electrode, there would be the positive charges, yeah? if it's drawn like this. So if, you, if we think about traveling, the charge is traveling in this direction, yeah? then cross B means, yeah, okay, so we turn this into B and according the right screw, yeah? its force is going in this direction. And on negative charges, it's going to the other direction. So at this electrode, positive charges will summarize. Yeah? And at this, this electrode, negative charges will summarize. So we're going to measure a voltage. Hello. And what is this voltage depending on? B. Okay, the charge. Charge. Yeah? At least the force is depending on the charge. Yeah? Let's think about we always we also know that the force yeah, is charge multiplied by the electric field. Yeah? This is the electric field. So the electric field actually is V cross V. Yeah? And the active field is going this direction. And if we have now here, make now projection. Here this is this is our pipe. It has a certain inner diameter D. And here we have zero and we are going to travel with L. Okay. And here we have this here, in between, we have UI, right? And this UI is the whole, the whole electric field summarized. So summarized from zero to D, yeah? electric field multiplied by the length. Yeah? So actually this is from 0 to D, V cross B multiplied DL. Let's make a bracket, then it's clear. Okay? And if, if this is designed proper, yeah, and the velocity, let's say the velocity is a middle velocity, yeah, and the, the B is constant, so we could, we could write this is actually, uh, B multiplied by V integral of 0 to D DL and this means B multiplied by V multiplied by D. Yeah. So the velocity multiplied by the strength of the magnetic field multiplied by the, by, by the distance. This is the voltage I am about to measure. Yeah. And this is only valid if this is 90 degree. Yeah. Because actually this, this, this product, there would also be the sine of the angle, but this angle here is 90 and sine of 90 degree is 1. Yeah? So this is also implied here. Okay, so this is the inducted voltage there. Hmm. So let's have a look on what is the size of the magnetic field, the velocity, the middle velocity, and okay, the diameter. Diameter is constant, it did, those two things are constant, then the inducted voltage is directly proportional to the velocity. And the velocity, since the area is the same, is directly proportional to the flow. Ping! We measure voltage, we measure, we measure flow. Okay? There are some things. Uh, well, there is, for instance, the electrochemical voltage, the electrochemical voltage, however, 
you can, if you make here a uh, capacitific coupling, yeah, then you could block it out. Yeah, so between those, huh? and uh, there would also be then, you know, this is not the only magnetic field. There's, for instance, the Earth magnetic field, and this is changing over time. Yeah? So I not I'm not measuring really the the absolute voltage, but I'm changing the direction of the magnetic field. So I'm changing here the voltage. And if I change the voltage fast enough, I can get rid of these electrochemical uh, voltages and I can get rid of the constant distortion of an overlapping magnetic field yeah, because this is not changing that fast. Yeah? Then I only have to look to the delta ui. Okay? I only have to look to the difference because the difference is then what I am implying or introducting introducing into the system. Yeah? So the absolute level of UI is not telling anything because it's a mix, mixture between my produced magnetic field and some external magnetic fields. And however, if I change my magnetic field and I only look at the change of the inducted voltage, then I know this is caused by me. Yeah? I know, okay, so this is how this is working. All right. So what are the benefits of this? What are the benefits of this plus side? There are a number of benefits. Yeah? There are no moving parts. No moving parts. Yeah? No, no blocking parts. This is the whole area, the whole area is there. I can use to travel. Yeah? So this means no pressure loss. Then particles. Even little rocks. Yeah? Are no problem. There's no, there's no chance for congestion, right? It's just rushing through. Okay. Uh, no pressure loss. Uh, uh, we have a huge nominal range, nominal size range. Can be tiny, tiny tubes, can be big tubes, big pipes. Uh, uh, it's linear. Uh, very linear. So these are the plus sides. What are the minus sides? Well, I need ions. Yeah? Said most of the fluids, not all. Yeah? Ions are mandatory. So we have a minimum conductivity. of our fluid. Yeah? Then dirt or deposit. In pipe and electrodes. Are influencing. The result. If this is if there is some crust or something like this on this, yeah, I cannot measure the internal voltage too good. All right, inductive flow measurement. That's the principle of inductive flow measurement. Accuracy, yeah, accuracy. We have around zero dot two to one percent of measured value. Uh, that's the typical accuracy. Uh, but now, this is inductive flow measurement. You see a very tempting or very, well, it's a neat approach, right? 
There's no buildings, no, nothing. There is no, no pressure loss. Just mount it. Yeah? However, to mount it, you know, these, these pipes, uh, they do have, they, they are not allowed that they are conductive. So they are usually made of some, some isolating material yeah, because you want to measure the pressure and there is no current running in the pipe. So this, this needs to be non-conductive. Yeah? So you cannot just place it there, drill some holes and this is usually not working. Yeah? So you have to build it in. So you have to stop your process and build it in. This is true for most of the flow measurements. Okay. However, next time we are talking about a flow measurement where this is not true, where there can be things even just clamped on and suddenly you can measure the flow of what is inside the pipe. <laughs> How this is working, yeah, we will discuss in next video, next video about ultrasonic flow measurement. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.